into Slick Talk. This is your host, Blackstone Joe, and this is episode 25 called ATF and What to Do With It. It's good to be back behind the mic. Today I am riding solo, but with that being said, the previous installment, episode 24, Diesel Fuel, that episode I did with my friend and colleague, Ben, that was a great time. We're going to get Ben back in the show, Um, but with that being said, I'm happy to be back behind the mic. It's always fun getting a chance to drum up new episode ideas, but This time I didn't have to make up an episode idea. It was actually sent along from a customer, and we love that. We love getting the chance to just let the audience kind of do the episode planning for us and reach out. And sure enough, we had a question about ATF, that's automatic transmission fluid, and what to do with it. Should it be changed? Urban legends about why you shouldn't change it, and people just kind of wanting our opinion on that. So we're excited to get into the main event. First, we have a few things. So first off, we want to cover what's in the news, you know, from the Blackstone side of things or your host personally, and this is a little bit of a mix of the two, this particular item. So we were contacted by Adam from Airplane Intel, and he wanted to reach out and talk to us about appearing on their show. So this podcast is phenomenal, by the way. Uh, I want to give them a shout out because they were just very professional, um, you know, through the whole communication process and then checking out the show. It was a lot of fun hanging out and talking with Adam. So just a little bit of a preview. I mean, we, we covered oil analysis at large, you know, a lot of broad stroke points, uh, reasons that folks would be interested, the value of used oil analysis. But we, we talked about it in direct relation with aircraft. And that's something I was really excited about chomping at the bit because, you know, to be fair, we've talked a lot about automotive applications here. And, and you know, for good reason. You know, I, I would say probably 60 to 70 percent, you know, of what we do is going to be a mix of automotive and industrial But aircraft is still a big part of the business, and I know we have to have some listeners out there who are wanting some insight on the aircraft side of things, and sure enough, we have it. It's kind of a a wait-and-see approach, kind of listening to our audience reactions to certain episodes and and taking the recommendations. Like today, you know, we had a a question directly come in for an ATF episode. Uh, So as we get those questions in for aircraft, we will be listening to them and we're really excited to dig into aircraft. And this was a really good uh, point to do so. So Airplane Intel, um, I would definitely suggest subscribing to their show, however you get your podcasts. And check them out. And in a couple weeks, they're going to air our episode between me and Adam. I had a great time talking with him. Um, You know, we had at least a good half hour or so um, worth of content. And I think it would really apply to people who, again, maybe they're interested in used oil analysis in general, or the people who specifically want to know about aircraft. How can oil analysis help with a pre-buy? Or what's the value in building trends for an aircraft engine specifically? What kind of problems can we find? You name it. So that was really fun. Um, But yeah, changing gears a little bit. I also got a tattoo recently. And for those that know me personally, you know, it's not my first. I have like several tattoos. Um, But this one I wanted to do particularly because long and the short of it, I got married recently. And as COVID has been known to do, um, it thwarted our initial plans. Um, So we, instead of doing our full-fledged wedding, you know, we had a really small ceremony, ended up having to shake up things as far as my groomsmen, um, really everyone who was invited in general kind of got thrown a curveball. But so I wanted myself and my best man to still commemorate the wedding, the participation that would have been. So we decided to get matching tattoos. Um, and then that turned into getting not matching tattoos, but getting like the same idea, but our own twists on them. And I don't have the full episode time to go into why, um, but my tattoo was a crab, a Haikigani crab particularly. And if anyone out there does not know what that is, I would suggest looking them up because they're really cool. Uh, the thing about Haikigani crabs, well, a couple things is first of all, uh, they look great because their shell kind of 
they're a really unique shell that resembles like a face. And the other thing that's cool about them is in Japanese lore, uh, they believe that they, these crabs in particular carry the souls of dead sailors. And there was, there was a lot of cool aura there. So um, I ended up getting a Haikigani crab with a skull like where the shell is and then it's like crossbones behind it. And if you ever want to know more about why exactly myself and my best man uh, got crab tattoos, the reference, I'd love to talk about it. I don't want to crowd everyone's time and space right now with it, but um, I, I bring it up because right now it's in the healing stage where it itches like a lot. And if anyone's got a tattoo out there, they know what I'm talking about where uh, the skin's healing itself and you have it kind of... Um, it, it's like a sunburn peel um, after the initial you know healing stage is done. Like a weekend, it starts peeling, and it itches terribly. And you want to do something to address that itch. And it's kind of like when you get a bad report or when you get a report with some areas to watch. You know, like I, I can always tell um, you know the the frustration that might creep in whenever I write a report. For someone and I tell them now we have a couple items on our watch list or we have a couple areas of potential concern and I, I always you know because I empathize with the uh, the readers reaction you know they're probably sitting there like come on tell me is this a problem you know like don't keep me in suspense so I can always you know appreciate that but yeah it's like when you get a new tattoo and you want to do something about it the same thing happens when you get a report and it's not sparkling clean. There's not something perfect yet. It's, there's a lot of, you know, intersection here, you know, between the two. So I thought that was kind of cool. It made me think about how just like when we identify a potential issue and you want the fix right away. Well, it's like that when a tattoo's healing. You want to show it off. You don't want it to just be this nagging, you know, itch and, you know, when that tattoo's healing. You can't really be proud of it yet because it's got a little bit of ways to go. And it's just like that when we find a potential issue, you know, you have to, in some cases, wait it out and see what's going on before you can take too hasty of an approach with it. But yeah, I'm coming at you on... You know, recording of this episode is happening on November 16th. That's a Monday. Monday Night Football is coming. That means naturally we're only just a few short minutes away from the Chicago Bears trying to hurt me again. Um, if anyone out there, by the way, I know this, this might, you know, open us up to a little bit of dislike out there, but I'm, I'm willing to be me and let you guys know who I'm into sports wise or music wise, or, you know, we're going to get into all facets so you guys can get to know me better. Um, but yes, as a dedicated bears fan, I'm used to there being a lot of frustration, emotional heartache, especially in the offensive side of the ball. That's another thing too. If any customers ever want to talk about things like that, don't feel like you have to only contact us because of a, of a report. Maybe you just want to talk trash and, and tell me that you're a Packers fan. I'm not necessarily going to write, want to write your next report, but hey, I'll talk to you anyway. Because the more we have in common, the better. And the more you can get to know your analyst, whoever is looking at your samples, you want that continuity. Never hurts to get to know the other person better. And it also never hurts to get to know the ATF that is in the transmission, that is under the hood of whatever you're driving. ATF is something that kind of has a lot of, um, let's say, urban legends and myths surrounding it. So a lot, you know, it's, I think it kind of starts off as forgetfulness. Um, why do I say forgetfulness? Well, people kind of forget how long ATF has been in use, or maybe they buy a car and, it's, you know, it's not really on your, the top of your list of concerns, you know, the mileage or the kilometers, on ATF. So I think people kind of forget that it's been there. Engine oil is kind of more at the forefront of people's minds most of the time, but not really ATF. So it's been in the car for who knows how long you've been driving and driving and driving. And maybe, uh, maybe you're on the third or fourth oil change since you bought the car. And then you start to think, Oh, the ATF, how long has it been in there? Calendar time, mileage, 
And then maybe you kind of just want to forget about it, put it on the back burner and say, well, a transmission shifting like a dream. Just going to let it go. So then you just keep going and going. And then maybe you've let it go for so long that you, you start to think you might do something wrong by changing it. Because the transmission shifting well, you don't know how long it's been in there. And, and then I think people kind of, they, they go from forgetfulness to being scared of change. And best believe, you know, when it comes to oil, you know, you can debate this in all other realms of life. But when it comes to oil, change is good. It's not always necessary. Sometimes you can work your way around it. Sometimes you can get more use out of oil than you thought you could. But change is never bad. Unless, of course, you're talking about your wallet and you're changing it too much. It's never a bad thing. So I think people start off with a little bit of a laissez-faire attitude, a little bit of forgetfulness, and then they get scared and, and might not want to touch it. And that is where we meet a lot of people um, when it comes to sampling from their, their transmissions. They start off with, well, I don't know how long it's been in there, and I've heard if you change it that you could ruin the transmission. It's kind of interesting. Yeah, you know, I've heard a lot of um, a lot of paraphrasing of statements that kind of go along the lines of, "Well, my mechanic or whoever, maybe it was a parent, trusted, you know, friend, said that the ATF will mate to the transmission, and and if you change it, then all of a sudden the gears or or you know." They're, catastrophic failure will ensue and it's kind of this fantastical disaster movie you know it's like uh imagining the day after tomorrow will occur in your transmission just because you changed the atf now a whole lot of this calls for speculation um to be honest you know for both sides you know whether it's the customer or us um you kind of get into this game of of Believing an urban legend or a myth or, or a well-accepted, you know, practice. Um, and, and then for us to try and tell you you're wrong, we would rather just go to the data. And we're looking at a couple of things when we are deciding if a transmission, an ATF sample looks good or bad. We're going to want to look at metals. We're going to want to look for solids. Check out the viscosity and see if there's any unexpected contamination. And that's really what you need to focus on here. Put away those tales, those tall tales you've heard from the garage. And let's just look at the numbers. Because if oil is left in use, you know, going beyond these these supposed truths um you know here's here's some definite reliable information you can go on i think it's logical i don't think anyone's going to hear this and and think it's wrong oil as it is in use accumulates metal and solids the solids are formed from the oil itself being exposed to heat and use. It will normally solidify. And when we talk about solids, you know, the solids that we identify start out just below 0.1% and, and we go up from there. Oil as it is in use is accumulating metal, accumulating solids. So from there, just imagine... Is it good for metal and solids to go unchecked? Well, certainly not. Because eventually that oil is going to become so full of metal, so full of solids, that it's going to lose its ability to clean and lubricate like it should. When you decide to leave oil in use just unchecked forever and ever and ever it's kind of you know there's not going to be a definite you know moment 
when the transmission is just going to blow up. But you can rest assured that when metals are excessive, when insolubles are excessive, that's going to prevent the oil from being able to do its job. So how do you find that point? Well, naturally, you need to start with a baseline sample. Build some trends and see how things are moving over time. It's so important to build trends. And, and I, I want to, you know, come back to this point of, you know, leaving oil in use and, and how, you know, folks can be forgetful and so on and so forth. I certainly can't blame people and, and we don't want to do that. For, for taking a laissez-faire attitude because, truthfully, manufacturers don't always do the owners a lot of favors, especially when they come out with things that are called lifetime fluid. Um, a good portion of the transmission samples we look at, I think, are solely because people will say, well, it says lifetime fluid, is it really? And, and absolutely, as a conscientious owner, I would do the same. I would want to check it out, and I applaud people who, who take this approach as well. Because lifetime is so subjective. We've talked a lot in previous episodes, you know, when, when it comes to how metals are generated and, and, and how you establish the ideal oil change interval so much of that is based on how much metal the engine is ma- or you know the engine is making and and where that metal's coming from a car that travels on the highway at consistent speeds rpms is going to generally make less metal than the same car that is doing a lot of hard use Track days, lots of short trips, dyno sessions, even just, you know, hustling in and out of congested traffic. Generally, you're going to have less metal in one scenario than the other. So then, let's think, during a transmission's lifetime, what if it's engaging in hard use so often you have to imagine that could call for a different plan of action than a transmission that happens to be on the receiving end of such easy use that metal is rarely generated and it's so little of an amount that sure, maybe leaving it in there for a long time is doable, but still you talk about this idea of lifetime fluid. Well, that's just such a tricky way to view it. What if in this car's lifetime, the engine needed replaced? What if in this car's lifetime, there was a recall on, on some other part? And what if replacing these things kind of altered the transmission's life, then changing it from what it would have been if, if, if the car had remained stock or, or didn't run into a problem here or there? Life is crazy, even when we're not in 2020. And I think that Due to the ever-changing factors, due to how much can change for a car or truck from day to day, you have to assume that things aren't always going to go according to plan. And again, I just want to keep coming back to this idea of lifetime. Well, that's so relative and different for everyone. Taking a look at that fluid at the very least, let's not even talk about changing it or, you know, drain and fills or not even getting to that. Taking a look at it and seeing the condition of that fluid, you know, sampling without draining. That's worth it, I would think. Just to see what the condition of the oil is. What's the viscosity? Is there a bunch of solid material? Are metals accumulating at a point that is far beyond what averages show as typical. Just like with engines, we're going to develop averages for transmissions. We'll let you know uh, how that transmission is wearing. Because sure enough, there can be problems in a transmission, just like there can be problems in an engine, just like there can be problems in a differential. So at the very least, taking a look can't hurt. Sample size for a transmission is the same as engine oil, same as anything else, three and a half ounces. 
So starting off with a sample is going to give you some insight on how that fluid is holding up. Now, where do we go from there? Well, if we do see an exorbitant amount of metal, a concerning amount of solids, or worst case scenario, some unusual, you know, contamination, then we will go from there, but not necessarily with a full flush or, or anything of that nature. Maybe just a partial drain infill. We see that all the time, really help bring metals down. That's one thing I wanted to go back to as well. You know, the, the uh, idea that changing the oil will bring utter demise to a transmission. Well, here's a reality that I can speak to with full confidence. Adding oil that does not have metal and solids in it, getting fresh oil in a transmission, you know, what's oil's mission to clean and lubricate? How can that be a bad thing? I just don't see a scenario where it could. And if you want to just leave oil in there and the car is racking up hundreds of thousands of miles, metal and solids accumulating all the while, to me, one path kind of leaves so much potential for stuff to go wrong. The other path, a more conscientious sort of service plan, is only opening the transmission up to fresh oil. Now, you want to be careful. You want to make sure you're not just taking it anywhere for changes and being a little bit careless with the kind of ATF that's going in. Because Lord knows, transmissions are sensitive machines when it comes to the oil that they need often. So you want to be careful, but still adding fresh oil that's free of metal, free of solids. I think that would do a transmission a favor, just like it would an engine. Cause think about it. Engines. We never run into this sort of dialogue, right? About you got to leave that oil in there all the time. You know, we never take that tact. We suggest an oil change for a transmission just like you would for an engine because getting fresh oil in the system, well, that's only going to be a good thing. Now, surely, you don't want to put the wrong oil in. And you do want to avoid an approach where you're just changing it all the time for no reason at all. Now, we certainly want to clarify that. We are always open to extended oil use for transmissions. If you want to run it longer, by all means, we're always looking to help you get the most out of a fill. But in situations where it looks like metals are, are quite high or maybe we're looking at a potential issue, then we'll suggest some maintenance if you're, if you're looking for that. That's the other thing too. I mean, our suggestions are just that, suggestions. And they're based on what we've seen over the years. They're based on what we've seen from particular models. All of this rests on analysis that we've done in the past, what we've learned, data we've taken in from recalls, from customer info, you know. Let us know if you know something about a transmission, a common concern with a particular model, but we are always going to try and help you take the most proactive and in many cases, money saving approach. You know, if you are starting out and you want to see if extended oil use is an option, by all means, we will suggest a longer interval if possible. And if maintenance is needed, then we will suggest that too. So yes, we want to, at the end of the day, dispel with the notion, the tall tale that changing ATF will kill a transmission. And the reason for that conclusion is that adding fresh oil in the system will help to remove excess metals. It will help to remove solids. And that's a good thing. Now, surely you don't want to take too proactive of an approach, start dumping ATF all the time, changing it so often that you're kind of 
throwing money out the window, but don't be afraid to put fresh oil in the system. That's where we stand, but let us know what you think. Sound off in the comments. Let us know if you have common concerns with your transmission, if there have been common uh, notions passed around in your circles, things you've heard. We'd love to hear that. We'd, lo we'd love to have that dialogue. But for now, that brings episode 25 to a close. I want to thank you all for listening, being a part of this journey. We're already at 25 episodes. It's been really fun. And Lord knows we have a whole lot more to come. Thanks for listening. <laughs>